When it comes to Call of Duty, one thing that we know all too well is about betrayal. Whether that be Adler at the end of Black Ops Cold War. It was always for the greater good. You're a goddamn hero, you know that kid. Heroes have to make sacrifices. That's why when I ask you for one more, I hope you understand. It was never personal. Or Jonathan Irons in Advanced Warfare. So let's be clear. I am here to solve the world's problems. And I believe the world's problems begin with you. Betrayal is something and a motif in Call of Duty that we know all too well. But really, no betrayal was ever bigger than General Shepard. And we have now been graced with two different iterations of General Shepard. And that is what we are going to be diving into, his new story within Call of Duty. But to fully understand his motivations and where he comes from, we first have to look at the OG General Shepard. Now, in this, we need to understand his motivations, and his story actually began in Call of Duty 4. You see, when you invaded the Middle East, General Shepard was actually the general who pulled the trigger in sending in troops to the area. In fact, 30,000 troops into the area. So when the ultranationalists then went and nuked the area, you can just say he's a little bit tainted from the experience. Five years ago, I lost 30,000 men in the blink of an eye, and the world just fucking watched. Tomorrow, there will be no shortage of volunteers, no shortage of patriots. I know you understand. Now, after these events and going into Modern Warfare 2, General Shepard put together a plan. A group of elite soldiers brought together, known as Task Force 141. Welcome to the 141 best hand-picked group of warriors on the planet. Now, the thing with General Shepard is he has a motto when it comes to war, and here's what he has to say about it. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Boundaries shift, new players step in, but power always finds a place to rest its head. And in the original Modern Warfare 2, General Shepard was the one that wanted that power. However, he needed to find a way to do so. So what did he do? He knew that the person who currently had power was Vladimir Makarov. So he sent a CIA agent by the name of Joseph Allen undercover in a mission called No Russian. And in the attack on Zakaev International Airport, Joseph Allen was found out by Vladimir Makarov, sabotaged, and made it look like the Americans carried out the attack. But this was all a part of General Shepard's plan, because with the start of what we are going to call World War III, it gave him power, and the American government gave him money. Money enough to hire his own goons by the name of Shadow Company, a name that we're going to talk about a few times throughout this video. So now that General Shepard has his army, he has his power, there's one last thing to do. Clean up the loose ends. So after taking back the DSM and hiding the information about what he did at Zakaev Airport to cause World War III, he is now in the wind. He has his money, he has his army, and he can do as he pleases. That is, if Captain Price wasn't in the mix. So yes, you eliminate General Shepard, and that is essentially the end of his story within the original Modern Warfare trilogy. But lucky us, 
he has once again made a return within this Modern Warfare universe. Now, the first we heard of him was in Modern Warfare 2019, where he was the one who redesignated the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces to be put on a list and considered terrorists. What are they? One step at a time. No one said they're friends. The general would tend to disagree. Norris, I asked you to let Tell me Tell him, Laswell. Or I will. Command has officially redesignated Faris forces. You want to translate that from bullshit to English? It means they're on the list. This was then followed up by, at the end of the game, finding out that General Shepard is actually the one that greenlit Task Force 141, aka Price's crew. The left unchecked. It won't be. General Shepard pulled the files you asked for. What exactly is this about? So then the Modern Warfare 2 campaign starts out, and we find out that Kate Laswell is the one working with Task Force 141, reporting to General Shepard. Laswell. General Shepard. Oh, I know that look. Are we at war? You would be the first to know, sir. Damn right I would. Talk to me. We have a hit on Gabrani's second in command. Hassan Zayani, Kutz Force Major. He's taken up the mantle for Iran. Supplying terrorists. Money, weapons, intel. Well, he's ambitious. He's dangerous, sir. He wants retaliation for the Gabrani strike. He's planning something. Well, we can't take him in Iran. He's not in Iran, sir. He's on the ground in Al Masra. What the hell is he doing in Al Masra? There is only one way to find out, sir. Well, let's get him. When? What time is it now? Who do we send? And the answer to that would, of course, be Task Force 141. But here's the thing. General Shepard wasn't just working with Task Force 141. Months earlier, to be specific, in August of 2022, Shadow Company was sent in to the Middle East with a convoy transporting a shipment of three missiles. This shipment was then ambushed by Russians of the Kony Group of Ultra Nationalists. This will be important later. These missiles were then taken from Shadow Company and, of course, General Shepard and given to Major Hassan. In other words, the character who you're hunting for the entire game. This was essentially all General Shepard's fault after sending Shadow Company in with these missiles. But what did he do? He didn't tell his higher ups. He tried to cover it up. Because if we fast forward to the campaign, Task Force 141 ends up finding one of these missiles. The response was to figure out where it came from. How does Al Qatala have their hands on American missiles? But this was General Shepard's response. Give my team two hours with those missiles, sir. I will know everybody who's ever breathed on them. Negative, I want them destroyed. General, there's valuable intel there. This is an intelligence failure, Laswell. It's not going to be a tactical one. There will be 500 enemy soldiers on that site by sunrise. We need a win fast. Gold Eagle actual to ghost. Move your team and call for fire. I want those weapons destroyed. Roger the actual. So instead of finding out how Alcatala got their hands on these missiles, your job is to go out and destroy them. And you do this alongside Shadow Company, a group of PMCs hired by General Shepard. And as we know, Shadow Company was the one that originally lost the missiles, but you're going alongside Shadow Company, destroying the missiles. And when you get too destroyed, you go back to the Los Vaqueros compound. And well, let's just say Shepard strikes once again. What the fuck did you just say to me, Ben Hill? Don't do that. Don't do that. No one needs to get hurt here. Are you threatening us? Soldier, I don't make threats. I make guarantees. So let's not do this. I'm calling Shepard. General Shepard sends his regards. He told me all wouldn't take this well. He knows about us. He's put me in command of this operation from here on out. So y'all need to stand down. It's time to let the pros finish this. Why the hell are we talking like this is some kind of negotiation? It's not. I've got my orders. And now you have yours. And who the fuck do you think you are, cabron? My men are inside! I'm afraid not. Your men have been detained. 
So Shadow Company turns on Task Force 141, and let's just say there's a lot more to the story revolving around Shadow Company that we could definitely go over in a future video. If you want to see that, all you got to do to show me is simply hit that like button, and uh, we'll do a video in the next coming weeks. But as far as this goes, Shadow Company turns at the orders of General Shepard. And after this, Task Force 141 has to go in the wind, get Los Vaqueros out of the compound, and then once again, go after the missiles, go after Hassan. And once Captain Price finds out what happened with the missiles, let's just say he had some few choice words to exchange with General Shepard. You hid this. Why? We all keep secrets, Captain. What the hell was I informed? Consider yourself well informed now, John. Oh, that's really fucking helpful. General, thank you, but you were a day late to miss our short was three of them. We only found two. Then point yourself in that direction and fix it. And who fixes you, eh? I don't need fixing. I'm a patriot protecting my country. Protecting your own art. I do what needs to be done. And no one holds me down with a roll of red tape. I know what's best for the cause. <laughs> You've lost your mind, General. And you've forgotten what you're fighting for, John. To do good, you've got to do some bad. When we shit, we bury it. That's how it works. Yeah. We don't bury each other with it, do we? You need to turn off that side of your head and face down the real enemy. You need to call off your shadow. Graves? Yeah. <laughs> He's a dog with a bone, and I highly recommend you don't try and take it. This is your last chance to change your mind. Then what? And after I go for him, I'm coming for you. But as it turns out, by the time you take out Hassan and you take out Graves, General Shepard has escaped. He's gone in the wind, and we essentially don't know where he's gone. Or do we? It's kind of heads off snakes. And he's on a Shepard. Totally off the grid. No, oh, we'll find him. No, we've got bigger fish. So as Kate Laswell says, Shepard is in the wind. However, what we recently found out with the launch of the Ashika Island map is we found out that Shadow Company is on the island, but they're not the only ones on the island. The ultra-nationalist Coney Group, the same group of ultra-nationalists who stole the missiles from General Shepard, are there as well. And as we find out through the backstory that Infinity Ward gave us, there's a redacted person in charge of Shadow Company on the island fighting against the Coney Group. And if one person has beef with the Coney Ultra internationalist it is 100 percent general shepherd so do we know where he is i think ashika island is a pretty good guess so that is the full story of general shepherd's betrayal the og one the new one you got the whole thing here and if you enjoyed the video it's always appreciated if you hit that like button i think we're gonna have more to come out of this story in the next coming months with the addition of ashika island and as we do i will keep you guys updated but as for now, I think the best place to start is with Ashika Island and General Shepard being there. But hey, if you disagree, let me know what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed, hit that like button. If you want to stay up to date on all my story videos, we at least do one a week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for the stars.